Well, as a Christian in the end times, you should be watching Bible prophecy to gauge when you uh, believe the Bible is telling you that uh, the rapture is going to take place and the start of the tribulation will begin. And the rule of thumb is that you should not just be jumping on headlines and creating scenarios out of nothing like a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of Bible prophecy teachers are doing. You need to put all the pieces of the puzzle together to make sure that you're uh, putting a scenario together that fits what the Bible has to say. Now, certainly what is happening in Israel right now and throughout the Middle East, in fact, I can even broaden that to the, the entire globe where protests are being uh, played out all over the world against Israel. And certainly the media is playing right into the hands of what the terrorist in, uh, uh, from Hamas to Hezbollah to the Houthis in uh, Yemen. I mean, in fact, there are three fronts going on right now in Israel, one in Lebanon, one in, of course, Gaza, and also the uh, uh, Houthis in Yemen. So Israel's being attacked from all over. And now the attack of what Israel fears the most is public opinion. As predicted, it didn't take long for there to be calls of ceasefires or pauses or whatever the case may be, so that supposed humanitarian uh, supplies can get into Gaza. Of course, nobody knows whether or not there are weapons or other bomb-making supplies that could be being shipped in as well. But one thing's for sure, what this war has done, it has brought Israel's enemies out to be exposed to, for what they really are. Of course, Erdogan in uh, Turkey is now saying that he wants to lead the Muslim world in a fight against Israel and to uh, liberate Gaza. Of course, Turkey has pulled their uh, ambassador and now Secretary of State Blinken is now on his way and is likely in Turkey right now to try to smooth that over. As I stated in my last video, Israel's supposed friend, but now is uh, turned into an enemy, has said that Israel has no right to defend itself against Hamas, and has in fact brought the Hamas leaders to Russia in a support for, in a show of support for the Hamas uh, attacks. And now it's pretty clear that what Israel believed before that Russia was one of their allies is really a, an enemy. But again, that is what the Bible said would take place during the last days when uh, Russia, Iran, of course, who's already an, an, an enemy and has been an enemy for, for decades, and Turkey would come together and one day camp out on uh, Israel's northern border in prepare, preparation for an attack. Now, that hasn't happened yet, but all three of these countries, plus the uh, terrorist groups that they support, will one day take that step and this great army will uh, be camped out on Israel's northern border, just as the Bible stated in Ezekiel 38. Now, certainly a lot of people are trying to say that, wow, this is the, the uh, next step to um, the start of the Gog and Magog war. Well, uh, there, there's only one problem with that, and it's a very big problem. The Bible says in, Daniel, I'm sorry, in Ezekiel 38, 11, that at the time of this attack, that Israel would be living in a state of safety living safely within their own borders. So that's a very big landscape problem for this war to be taking place right now. In other words, don't expect Israel to be attacked by Russia, Iran, and Turkey until some type of a peace agreement has been established. Now again, this is what I mean by saying that you need to do your homework and you need to follow as to what the Bible actually says. You can't just start throwing out scripture to meet your end and to please your listeners just because a war in the Middle East has broken out. So if I were to speculate as to what this is, I would probably have to say that this could lead to a peace agreement that will bring peace and safety to Israel in preparation for this future war. Now that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. Right now Israel's under a tremendous amount of pressure to go into peace talks with Hamas leadership in order to, to free the, the, the hostages that number anywhere from 230 to possibly as many as 500. Of course, many of those hostages, we've learned, are United States citizens. And if the U.S. was smart, they would probably say to Hamas leadership, listen, you either are going to give us all of our hostages or we're going to join the war. And when we join the war, there will, there will be no ceasefire. Now, I don't foresee that being the case, but it could be. 
But this is really a time for being tough and for the United States to step up their rhetoric to Hamas and let the Arab world know that they have some skin in this game. There's a lot of their citizens that are still left as hostages in Gaza, and that will not be tolerated. But, you know, it's really hard to say how this is going to end because Hamas has really gone way behind, gone way beyond what they've ever done before. And some of the images, many of the images that have come out of this war are too gruesome to, to let go. So it's going to be difficult for the United States to talk Israel into a ceasefire because, frankly, there was no ceasefire called when we went into Iran, I'm sorry, into Iraq, nor was there a ceasefire call when we went into uh, Afghanistan. And this certainly is Israel's 9-11. So let me wrap this up right here and let me, tell, let me just tell you where we are in Bible prophecy. But before I do that, let me tell you and remind you that get on my Gitter account. If you want to be kept up to date with real uh, facts and figures regarding Bible prophecy, that's where you're going to get it. This is where I make most of my comments, give you pertinent da daily information, and I keep you on top of what's happening in Bible prophecy as it happens. So d go to your favorite app store, download the Gitter app, and then look up either Terry Malone or the Calvary Prophecy Report, and then begin to follow me. It's free, there's no charge to you, and uh, you're going to get the most up-to-date information available. And you know, one thing about where we are in the end times is that you still need to remember that earthquakes and uh, pestilence and wars and rumors of wars, all that's taking place right now, but we're still waiting for famine. So you still need to be, you still need to remain re realistic as to what's uh, going on in the end times. But where are we at in the end times right now? Well, we still need the temple to be rebuilt. That doesn't necessarily need to be rebuilt now, but at some point before the midway point of the tribulation period, it will have to be built. We are still living in a time where we need to see solid steps toward Israel of the three major players such as Russia, Iran, and Turkey because there has to be a Gog and Magog war and Israel needs to be living safely within their own border. So some type of peace agreement must come to pass that will make Israel think that they are living safely. Now that could be either just another peace agreement that's temporary or it could be the actual peace agreement that the Bible talks about in Daniel 9:27. Now that would be the peace agreement that kicks off the beginning of the tribulation period. But of course the question still remains, what about famines? Well that is a big question mark and um, in scripture it is positioned as to the fact that it's supposed to take place before the tribulation period begins. But if it took place after the rapture it um, wouldn't surprise me either. But I for the most part, take it at face value that it, these things will take place before the tribulation period begins. So I keep my eyes on what is taking place in Israel to see exactly what is going to happen in here in the next few weeks. Is the United States going to be able to convince Israel to pause for a second in order to either bring humanitarian uh, supplies in or to get more hostages out? I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. We'll have to wait and see. You know, certainly I would think that it would be nice to see all of the hostages get out of uh, Gaza. But at this point, I have to believe that it's, at some point, Israel just has to bite the bullet and uh, do what it knows it has to do, which is to eliminate Hamas. But unfortunately, that's probably going to mean the death of every hostage. But certainly keep an eye on what's going on in uh, this situation. Continue to pray for the hostages that they be freed. And don't forget to subscribe. And the best way to subscribe is to get on my Gitter account, as I, as I uh, indicated earlier. And for those who are not Christians, I would implore you to come to the Lord as soon as possible. You know, it's nothing more than telling the Lord that you want Him to be your Savior, thanking Him for dying on the cross for your sins, repenting of your sins, and committing your life to living for Him for the rest of your life. And I hope you'll make that decision today. And of course, if you aren't a Christian, I would also... Uh, suggest that you get a copy of my Tribulation uh, Survival Guide. Of course, Christians as well. You have friends and loved ones who need this book. You know this possibility they may be left behind. And in the case that that does take place, they will have this book to look back on, of course, along with the Bible. And it will be a, a great 
importance once they enter into the tribulation period gives them a rundown as to how they could possibly survive this horrible period of course the most important thing is to accept the lord as savior because if you don't accept the lord as savior it isn't going to matter whether you believe in god or not if you don't accept the lord as savior no amount of knowledge is going to keep you from taking the mark of the antichrist i know a lot of people think it will but the bottom line is it won't so I hope you'll go down to the description section of this video, get a copy of this book or multiple copies. Give them out to your lost friends and loved ones because I believe that this book could save their life. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.